And we've got these two today, which are completely different from each other. One of them is Tanger. Oh, 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 excuse me. <laughs> and the other one is, well. What? Oh, what? That's so good. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for yet another Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Marimba Morris, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Sanction Han, Scott Rader, Greg Harris, Dean P. Newberger, and Colin Ferry. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Livy Johnson. Thank you so much for joining the studio artist team. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. And yes, new merch. If you haven't checked out the new merch, look at this wave, look at this wave. Yes, that's right. The new Japan collection of my brand new Studio Family merch line is available at adamtanpercussion.com forward slash merch. I designed all these designs myself and I'm planning to come out with a few more before the end of the year, but you can start off by checking these ones out right now. And I'm also working on a brand new trio piece. I've never done a trio before and I'm hoping to finish it within the next two to three weeks. It's a very short timeline, but it's basically going to be two marimbas and multi-percussion. And that's why today's video is all about percussion ensemble. If you've been following my channel for a while, I've been watching a lot of DCI, I've been watching a lot of solo performances, but I haven't really watched that many percussion ensemble performances, like concert percussion ensemble performances. So I went through all of your submissions, which you guys submitted at antipercussion.com forward slash submit. And we've got these two today, which are completely different from each other. One of them is Tango and the other one is, well, you'll find out. So here's the first submission from Yunju Yu, which is La Muerte del Angel, is that how you pronounce it? By Astor Piazzolla, which is a percussion ensemble version. Now, I don't think there is actually a percussion ensemble version. So, did these guys arrange it? Hello, we are the percussion ensemble team named Our Percussion in South Korea, and I am the Cajon player in the video. I've never had any Korean submissions before. This is amazing. We often arrange a variety of classical repertoire to percussion ensemble versions. This video is also a self-arranged version. Okay, okay, I see. Of the La Muerte de Angel by Astor Piazzolla and we played this piece at our first concert. Well, I'm really excited to check this out because normally when people think of arranging Piazzolla music for concert percussion ensemble, I always think of things like Libertango, and Verona Porteño, you know, all of the ones that everybody knows. This one I don't think is as well known. So I'm really excited to check it out. Let's watch. Okay, so here's the group, our percussion. We can see there are six percussionists and a bassoonist. Bassoonist, that's a cool touch. And yeah, that's a lot of marimbas, wow. <laughs> I wish my university had this many marimbas. It's a lot of keyboard parts and we also have cajons and those are really cool music stands. If anyone knows where to get a music stand like that, let me know down in the comments below. Oh, we've got motor on, on the vibraphone. Ah, she's using... Oh, the person on the right is using the edge of the marimba, the frame of the marimba as a woodblock. That's a really nice touch. Or I suppose it's supposed to simulate the tango person stepping on the floor. That's really cool. Wow, those ballads are hard, but they don't sound harsh. Nice. Oh, let's go. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's sounding really, really great. This so together and the runs sound awesome. The arrangement sounds really great already. I just wanted to draw your attention to the left-hand side here where we have uh, sheet music stuck on black card. Now, a lot of people don't know that this is actually one of the best ways to lay out your sheet music if you must have sheet music on stage and you must have it all without any page turns. I think this is a very efficient way of doing it, just gluing pages on. I've done this black card thing a lot of times actually. I have a whole bunch of them over there in storage for things like Steve Reich, Zanakis, Mark Applebaum, just all kinds of music where there's just lots of pages and you just need to see them all at once. Really cool and it seems like they all have the same system. It's very consistent and I think when you have an ensemble, presentation is key. So I'm taking them very seriously at this point. I mean. The playing also sounds very good too. <laughs> oh, that bassoon, that bassoon. It's 
so together. The balance is really good too. I would like more bass if possible, but that might just be the recording. Oh yes, the sweet sound of bassoon. For the marimba rolls in the background. It's great arrangement, great harmonizing. Oh, 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 excuse me. <laughs> Those chords, I mean, they sound so lush on the vibraphone that like I used to listen to a lot of I don't know if you guys know like Jay Dilla like those kinds of hip hop beats where they have those like Rhodes chords and that that just oh that I love that feel of just cascading sevenths <laughs> Oh, and the marimba rolls are just like seamless behind it. Man, it's so together. And the bassoon's beautiful. Oh. Oh man, I'm a, I'm a sucker for cascading sounds. <laughs> if you've watched my videos, you probably think all I get impressed at is like really fast mallet flexes, but this is a different kind of flex. This is like a low key flex. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, bring back the groove. Wow, they're so together. The acceleration is so together. Oh. Okay, hold on a second. Now, I'm really enjoying the sound. I really, really like the sound very much. It sounds very bright. It doesn't look like they're having a really good time. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that you have to overdo it by any means, but if we just watch this part here again. This is quite an energetic part, right? It's very serious and it's a little bit cold in terms of appearance. I think definitely they could try and maybe lift the mallets more and, and you know show a little bit more of the energy. But obviously I'm not saying like they should go like whoa 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 like they're in a mosh pit or something. <laughs> but definitely I think a little bit more expression visually could help a lot with selling me the performance. But that being said, you know, it sounds fantastic. So yeah, I'm a little bit torn. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Oh, vibes. Oh, serious vibes ready. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm starting to see some energy from her now. Oh, whoa! Nice. That was good, very tasteful. Okay, hold on a sec. I noticed that these guys here and, and this person here as well, um, they're playing really strong, but their strokes are very like downward. You can see they're going dung, 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 and it doesn't ever lift off the bar. So it sounds, it sounds okay, but it looks very heavy and it looks very tight and very tense. See that? See this? It's like down, 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 down. Whereas I think this vibraphone player here, and also to an extent the marimba player over here with the red mallets, they seem to be lifting their mallets more and they seem to be having more height. To me, I'm more inclined to believe these two are enjoying it the most, <laughs> just from the way they play. So I think that could be something to explore, but otherwise it still sounds really good. Okay, sorry, I'll stop talking about this point now. Let's go back. Oh yeah, that key change. Yeah, the con player is doing a great job. Oh, nice glisses.
Whoa, that was cool. That was cool. That was, that was so cool. So one thing I talked about earlier was those black cards, right? You know how we're looking at these black cards on their stands and I was saying it's a really good thing. But one thing I always hated about them when I had to use them was that they take up a lot of space. They're usually a lot bigger than the stand itself. And it often results in blocking the view of the performers. If we look at this wide shot over here, you'll see that the stands, yes, the size of the cards isn't so much of an issue, but I think it's more the height and how it's literally just directly in front of the playing area. Most of the time they're playing in front of this stand and it makes it hard for people to see what you're doing, but it also makes it feel very tight and close. I always felt like when I had a stand right in front of my face, like for example in orchestra, sometimes you need to have it right in front of your face, I felt very closed off from the rest of the ensemble. So I think lowering the stands would help a lot. I think I've mentioned this on other videos as well, to just give you that nice expanse of ensembleness. <laughs> Oh, very nice, very nice. Very nice and very energetic. I like it. Der Buck. <laughs> yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of that performance and whether you agree with the things I was talking about, which is mainly just, I think, showing more performance-ness. <laughs> I can definitely hear the solo lines and the leading lines very clear. That soft moment in the middle with the descending sevenths, like, Ho, 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 ho. Sounded so good. I just really wanted more energy from the players themselves. Like I wanted to be able to see more energy. I wanted to see more action. But don't let that take away from just how awesome this group sounds and how awesome this arrangement is. I hope they have this arrangement for download or for sale or whatever, just so some other people can try it because it just sounds so good. And I really want to check out all of their other videos too. So yeah, all of the links to the performances as always in the description down below. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, our next submission is also a concert percussion ensemble, but it is a completely different style of ensemble piece. And I'm sure you guys know this piece. It's submitted by Kevin and it's called Collide. Yes, the piece was so epic that um, he didn't say anything about it. <laughs> so I will take over and I will tell you about this piece, Collide, which is by Jacob Remington. I believe it's supposed to be emulating the feel of the Large Hadron Collider, which is just this massive thing that is super sci-fi, super futuristic. I'm not a scientist myself, so I can't explain how it works. Basically, Jacob Remington writes a lot of these really large scale percussion works with really crazy runs. Very, very front ensemble inspired in my opinion. But I remember that these guys premiered this work in 2015 with TCU. And actually in 2018, when I was in West Palm Beach for Mallet Lab, I actually saw this live. The one and only time that I've seen this piece live and it was just, epic. The sheer scale of this piece is insane. So I'm really excited to get a chance to revisit it again. But this submission is actually Berkner High School Percussion Ensemble. So yeah, a high school group is going to play this. Like this is not a piece that I would recommend for high school students. Just saying this is like all the way up there. Here's the video and you can see, wow, this is Berkner High School in full form. Look how many marimbas there are. I still remember when we were at Mallet Lab, we had to find enough five octaves to be able to do this. Like you need so many instruments. I believe you need six five octave instruments, right? You have three vibes, two tubular bells, two, like, whoever needs two tubular bells. You have a xylophone. Um, I think there's like a whole bunch of quartiles and stuff, if I remember correctly. There's timpani, there's a whole bunch of drums, uh, just so much auxiliary percussion. Really excited to watch this. Let's watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. We gotta, we gotta watch that opening again. Isn't that so hilarious? Like, it's so quiet at the start and then suddenly, duh, so epic. That air raid siren thing is just awesome. I love it. Ready for this? Ready for this? Here we go. Amazing. I always feel sorry for these two mallet parts. They have to just keep doing that over and over again. I hey, remember these guys are high school students. Every time they have those counter melodies, the do 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 one two three, like this, 
there's so much there. And these guys are just, by the way, these guys are doing it memorized too. Just, I don't see a single music stand in front of anybody. That's crazy. Insane amount of skill. Okay, all right. I'm gonna stop myself from getting too hyped up. <laughs> Incredible. I love the sound effects too. Both symbols and everything. This poor guy has to play the same melody over and over again. <laughs> Pressure's on. Interesting that he plays on the edge like that. Oh, we're spinning up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wow! So together! Ah, oh, Amazing! With that marching machine, which... That guy's so hyped about that marching machine. <laughs> Man, these tom solos, look at this. Ah. Get hyped. Yeah. This is insane. Man, these ballot parts are insane, and these guys just... It's so together! It's about to get crazy, it's about to get crazy, I just know it. Man, this, the Bella Heights are crazy! Oh. Snare solo. Let's go, mate. So effortless. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Oh. Let's do it together. <laughs> Look at those vibes, man. Look at these guys. Wow.
Even though it's calmed down, I'm still getting super hyped. This is crazy. Man, that guy's turning his wrist like so fast. <laughs> how did they land that together? So how did they land that together? <laughs> I completely lost track of the beat there. Like I know it's just straight beats and just like it's intersecting semi quavers, but like <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back. That was that was worth going back for. But can I just say at this point that is ridiculous amounts of skill. So far, like, nobody has broken a sweat. If I was playing in it, I'd be very tempted to rush those 16 fronts, but they are having no such problems. <laughs> so, yes, let's watch that again, because that was insane. Oh, that's crazy. How do you even get out of that cross rhythm molasses to get such a clean 16th finish? Amazing. Okay, it's not as together at this section, but still very good. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, let's go. I have to commend all the two mallet runners, man. So much effort scaling up and down for the whole piece. And the cymbals sound incredible. Oh, 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 double verticals everywhere. This person looks so tired, but she's just going for it. Dun dun! <laughs> Whoa! Did you guys see that ending? Did you guys see that ending? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Go back, go back. Watch that, watch that ending, because that is ridiculous. That is actually ridiculous. That snap down that they did? Ready? Watch this, watch this. <laughs> so clean! So clean! That is just so well polished. You know, like when people say a performance is 100%, this is like 500%. That's ridiculous. I have nothing to say. Like, actually, I have nothing to say. <laughs> I bet you I would be standing on a chair in this hall and just clapping like this, like <laughs> that's crazy amount of time, effort, dedication, all of them must have practiced so much for this. Great direction from the director as well. I wasn't even that good in university. <laughs> that's crazy. That's... I think I need to reevaluate my career now. I've seen the original TCU performance of this and of course I saw the one at Mallet Lab live but this one was actually very well polished. Yes there were a couple of parts where the two Mallet runs maybe is a little bit dirty but really not that noticeable in the grand scheme of things. I feel like the intent of the piece for this sort of chaotic energetic feel you know portraying that large hadron collider and just the craziness of that thing <laughs> it really comes out really well i could really see they were enjoying it you could see their faces were lighting up with excitement I just this was really the total package. And the thing is in concert percussion, we don't really get to play many pieces like this where we have huge ensembles with many keyboard instruments simply because it's a logistical nightmare. Like, can you imagine getting six, five octave marimbas on a regular basis for rehearsals and stuff like that? Like, that's the dream for me. I would have loved to play in an ensemble like this in school if I had the chance. So well done, Birkenau High School, well done. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this performance of Collide. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please give me a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. And if you would like to submit a clip just like any of these to the show, you can go to adamshampercussion.com forward slash 
Summit. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. Stone Cold.